Hey, Mike, what do Kelly Slater and PT have in common? I don't know. They're both world champs? Nope. They both own Endless Summer Box Set. Oh, my God. Rad. You guys, you can get it, too. The link's in the show notes. Welcome back, everybody, of the QuiverCast. This is Mike, your host. And this is all brought to you by YourAudioLegacy.com and QuiverBuilder.com. And please check out my other podcast, The Stinky Booties, I do with my buddy, Billy. Let's roll. Okay, hello, everybody. This is Mike here with the QuiverCast. And our today's special guest is Sean Duggan. That is a filmmaker of a documentary coming out. And I think the first premiere, right, Sean, is um, this week. You know, it's our. This is our West Coast premiere. Nice West to Coast. join you, Mike. Uh, yeah. Pleasure to meet you. Um, yeah, I. Uh, it actually premiered. Uh, this will be the West Coast premiere. It, it premiered in Belfast, uh, Northern Ireland, in uh, early November, and then uh, the U.S. premiere was at Doc NYC, like uh, a week later. Uh, so, but this is uh, the first of uh, first showing of 2022, and the first on the West Coast. Right on. Well, let's go. Let's go backwards a little bit. So, um, you're a surfer. When did you start surfing, and and where did you grow up surfing? So I uh, I grew up in Jersey. Uh, mm-hmm. Hello, Jersey listeners, wherever you are out there. <laughs> yeah, I grew up going down to towns like Manasquan, Belmar on the on the East Coast, and then uh, yeah, body body surfer and foamer. You know, for yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. much my childhood rafts, whatever we could get our hands on. And then, um, you know, I actually started getting into surfing later. We were, family was always big into the water, but then, you know, I don't know. Uh, I always played a lot of basketball and stuff growing up, but uh, in my twenties, I had some good friends, and they were like, "I was like, I just got to start surfing." And so I started borrowing boards oh, like right. in my twenties, okay. and then, um, and then I actually had a basketball injury where I snapped my Achilles, Ooh. and and I was like, "Time for a pivot." Uh, I'm just going to surf. And then I, I joined them on a trip to Costa Rica. Oh, and then rad, I, rad. after that, it was like, I was all You're in and, and for the next, you know, 25 years, I've pretty much oriented, you know, probably most of my life, like a lot of surfers around, okay, where's waves. And what, if I'm going on a vacation, is there, is there going to be surf? Okay. Are you bringing your boards with you? Are you just renting boards or? You know, um, it depends. I've had absolutely horrible luck with taking my boards. Like I've taken them <laughs> to like, uh, Fiji and they've arrived like the last day of the trip. So I've, I've kind of resigned myself that after a few of those trips where they just arrive super late, I'm like, I usually just rent where I, when I, you know, you know, go, I I get the feel of like where's, where I can get my hands on good boards. We'll just rent. But yeah, it's uh, that's the tricky thing. It's like nice to have your own quiver, but it's like, it's also nice just to have uh, it arrive. Right on. And are you surfing a lot like now? Or are you kind of like swamped with work and, and looking at the movie? No, I've, I've actually uh, – so uh, a big move for me personally was we moved actually from Brooklyn to the West Coast. Uh, Brooklyn, New York? Yeah, we yeah. moved from Brooklyn right to – so now I'm based in Mar Vista. So I moved to Mar Vista okay. about end of last year, like a midsummer. So oh, I'm about uh, – well, I guess eight months in as a West Coaster. So I've definitely, um, I think I've surfed more in the last eight months than I've surfed in like the last decade. Just because, oh, right. you know, as much as uh, uh, my fellow Rockaway and East Coast surfers, like you, you get, you have to deal with like all the cruel irony is most of the good swell comes when it's, you know, tw- 20s and yeah, 30s. Yeah. So it's been a pleasure kind of like just now, you know, throwing keep staying in a two three all through winter and feeling yeah. like that's that's plenty uh, all us so. wimps out here are like freezing it's like 55 or 60 and we're freezing oh yeah no whatever, whatever endurance i had it's all gone oh, eight okay, months. Okay. it didn't last it was like I'm, I'm already like today it was like 50 degrees in the morning i'm like i don't know if i want to go out oh yeah no it was horrible weather today right on so do you uh you miss the east coast uh, you know what i Just always always love in like you know Jersey, tri area will always be home. Okay, uh, but myself, never ha- having lived out in the West Coast, it's 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 great. You know, I mean, we're uh, I still consider like self like 
getting settled, getting used to like for the first eight months here, I was still acting like I lived on 10th Street in Brooklyn. I would go shopping eight times a day. <laughs> but but now that involves a car and it's like yeah. it was like an object lesson in inefficiency. <laughs> um, uh, so, you know, I'm kind of uh, habituating my habits to the West Coast, but we love it. Yeah, we did a big hike. Me and my kids went up this morning to Topanga oh, uh, right. State Park uh, just to go so up. Cool. So, yeah, there's so many great things that are uh, within striking distance and still go back. Like I'll go back uh, to the East Coast in about a week for the film. And so we'll still go back and forth a good amount uh, and for my uh, for work also. Okay, right on. Okay, so um, what gave you the idea to to make this film? Keep it a you know, secret. I was um, besides being a surfer, of course. Growing up, I, I was huge into obviously the water, uh, loving like, uh, and then surfing the last twenty five years. But other big passions are uh, music, radio, podcasting, which we're doing right now. I've okay. worked uh, uh, for. Music and entertainment companies for the last you know twenty years. I've, I've now worked first Pandora, now Sirius XM for the last uh, thirteen years. That's and uh, so music has always been. A, but the other big passion for me has been film. Okay. And about you know five years ago, I was just like, if if I don't do something, I was more than just a casual like film fan. And I was like, I either so I wanted to get into producing a film. And yeah. you know, as I started talking to friends in the film business, they were like, okay, well there's really two routes if you're going to produce. You can either option a script mm -hmm. or come up with something on your own. And so I had like a yellow paper legal pad of like ideas. I started writing ideas down. And, you know, just one of the ideas, uh, I started narrowing it down to the ones that wouldn't require $100 million in financing um, <laughs> cause didn't, or the access to the Marvel Avengers franchise, which I thought would be a little bit hard yeah. to convince them to <laughs> give it to an unknown guy on 10th Street in Brooklyn. But I just had like one idea I just kept going back to was just like, uh, and I was thinking of a scripted story, actually. Mm. It was like Ireland surfing, like origin story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so I was actually starting down the route, and uh, I started like thinking like, hey, maybe I could work on a script. And I started doing some research, you know, just to get some ideas. Yeah. Uh, for for writing a script, and then I started quickly found some of the characters who, who would become the foundation of the film. And you know, I, I quickly realized after I made contact with a few of these folks as, as I was doing research that, yeah, you know, I didn't. It felt like there was a, the story itself of the start of surfing in Ireland. There was enough there that I, I didn't really need to put top spin on it and make a scripted story. I would just kind of tell, hopefully, their story as best I could. And that's kind of how I went down the path of uh, making this film. Yeah, it's right. And you did a great job. Okay, so um, and you, I think in the movie you say you've been to Ireland. Your yeah, so yeah, my background is, if my last name doesn't give it away, Duggan, um, <laughs> I'm... I'm that, that's not a highly Italian name. It's, uh, I was, uh, yeah, born to an uh, Irish American family. All my grandparents are, um, were born in Ireland. And then, you know, our, my first time on a plane was going to Ireland when I was seven, you know, to right. the West coast of Ireland. Mm. And, uh, you know, from that point on, you know, it was like our first time, like that, that summer is still like a huge memory for me you know, being on the West coast of Ireland. You know, I just, um, as I went back over the years, you know, I've always had a real close affinity and, you know, I'm actually, my dad encouraged me to get a dual citizenship when I was living in Europe when I'm in my early twenties. Oh, okay. And, uh, and yeah, I've gone back and forth many times now, but, you know, was, but always strong affinity. And then also when I played music, I played Irish music a little bit in my twenties. And um, is that just the music that, that drew you in or is it? Yeah, because you're yeah. You know, my dad will ancestral? always have like, Irish music on. We okay. grew up with like a, a mix of Rumors, Fleetwood Mac. You got your Elton John, um, and okay. then a ton of Irish music. My dad exposes to a lot, but uh, like we we shared a love of Irish music, and he would take me into pubs in New York to go check out live Irish music, and then I got into it. You know, the first thing that really came together, like I felt like quickly for the film, while it was a long process. Like I had the soundtrack in my head almost immediately. I was like, I thought it would be such a fun thing to work with like a uh, uh, iconic surf songs and then uh, a celtic uh, soundtrack and that was always like as i was working on the early editing and just putting it together it was that was super fun you know making that mix of uh that stew of irish and uh surf music yeah you know it's excellent um did the so was that like the the, the motivation to, to make the movie 
and surfing and tie them all together. Has that story ever been really been told? I've never even heard it. You know, it, you don't um, hear much about Irish surfing. Yeah, I mean, it's um, you know, it, it. I'll say there has been like it's actually some pretty solid films covering oh. um, Irish surfing. You know, but a lot of it is you know a little bit on the origin story. But for me personally. I'm always curious about like where things started. Like, you yeah, know, I'm yeah. like, uh, I just like, you know, I, I just, I find it like fascinating. I was just reading like, you know, it's like, you know, Ken Burns he's come out with so many, like he has a Ben Franklin one come out in a month. And I'm like, I just love to always find something new. Mm -hmm. And I always think there's something kind of unique about people who start things. You know, there's something of it's a little bit crazy uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and usually something of a, a twist to the story. So I, I was just very curious, like, like right now, like in Ireland, it's actually become in the last 20, 30 years, very well known for its big wave surfing. There's some yep, pretty big. It's blown up lately. Big surfers. But, um, you know, hey, like that, that stuff's pretty well covered in YouTube. I could do nothing to add to that. No, no. Canon. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, but the, as I started hearing about the characters and also I knew about Ireland in the 70s just from that first trip. Okay. And it was, you know like going from Jersey, Union County, New Jersey to Ireland when I had a seven-year-old, you're like, well, what, what? There's no, the highways. There's mm -hmm. like, you know, there's like, you know, my cousins are like have like donkeys on their farm. And I'm like, <laughs> it was just, it was like wild going back in time. And I, totally I mean, foreign. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just seeing that that uh, had really not been changed by modernity and like, you know, uh, the modern world yet. But then also to kind of see that like a surf culture permeating against that, it just seemed mm -hmm. like a, a great contrast, which potential for a lot of fun, you know, to kind of uh, explore that. And when's the last time you went back to Ireland? Has it been recently? So, yeah, like last year when I went back for the premiere of the film, okay. I went there. And then actually this coming Friday, uh, it'll premiere in it, – so premiered – I went for the premiere in Northern Ireland. Um, and then uh, this Friday, it'll premiere in uh, their in Dublin as part of the Dublin International Film Festival. Oh, so, uh, so are you excited about, about that? Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm very soaked. Uh, so it's going to be due to COVID. It's going to be one of these streaming festivals. A lot of uh, festivals okay. are, you know, either uh, streaming or partially uh, live. Yeah. But I, you know, I've been receiving since it, you know it premiered in Belfast. I've been getting a ton of emails from all over Ireland. So. I'm excited that like it'll be available this week for streaming uh, in Ireland, which is great. Oh, that is great. Okay, do you think so? The, the movie is kind of like the forefathers of of surfing in Ireland. It's yeah, kind of the I premise. mean, it, it, yeah, it's kind of like uh, you know the the characters that uh, I kind of focused in on was you know as I started doing the research was you know amazingly like you know for those of you who don't your listeners who may not know it's like you know Ireland you know it has a about 2000 miles of coastline so it has an yeah. abundance of like coast and like if you really you look at the coast that faces the north atlantic it's um you know it's it's very rocky there's all kinds of breaks i mean there's literally thousands of available mm -hmm. breaks you, you go back to 1962 you know the one of our primary uh subjects kevin cavey yep. was this uh kid and you know kind of a an interesting kid who was like in dublin but dreaming of like fantasizing about hollywood and, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know you know everything like uh, westerns to gis marines and then uh, you know one day had like he's in the west of ireland with his family on vacation opens up a reader's digest and yeah, yeah. sees pictures of surfing and it was his like kind of like in uh 2001 it's like a touching the monolith moment where he yeah. <laughs> he basically from that point on for the next decade he would orient his whole life around bringing surfing to ireland um yes. And then, you know, what the kind of the story follows, you know, Kevin making it his mission to be like the primary evangelist, some other folks joining that kind of this Dublin crew. And then there's another crew from Belfast who were also kind of having these moments of discovery, mm -hmm. but approaching in a very different way. There was, um, you know, the Dublin crew is very much around, hey, let's import billboard uh, uh, boards from uh, Bilbo in uh, the UK, a big surfboard manufacturer at the time. Yep. Kind of like more the the contests, putting Ireland on the map, and then uh, the guys up in the north were very much of a different ethos of uh, a out of necessity. They started building their own boards very quickly, building their own wetsuits. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. You, show, you show that fantastic. And, and it was, um, but uh, the, but very much also like, hey, there were there were amazing talent of uh, surfing up in uh, this Belfast crew. 
but they also had a different kind of perspective about, you know, they lived how, in a different environment. Than yeah, that. different environment, um, and then also uh, there was hey the the troubles conflict between uh, sure. Northern Ireland. They were kind of living amongst uh, a very turbulent and a lot of violence daily at that time. Um, and you that think that surfing gave them an escape? Yeah, I mean that was definitely something which came up throughout. Like you know, Davy Govan, who's yeah. kind of like a primary subject, and still an amazing guy. He's here, he's in his seventies, and you know, I surfed with him right before the uh, second screening up in Northern Ireland. He lent me one of his homemade boards, and like yeah. we got in the water. Um, but yeah, like the, they had a, a, a perspective of um, you know they used surfing as an escape. But they also were very much cognizant of like how special it was, and maybe they shouldn't be waving the banner for all of Europe to show up yes. and start crowding the brakes. So that was kind of a tension that kind of yeah, yeah. manifested well itself the towards the end of yeah. um, you know the yeah. beginning 72? of the seventies, nineteen seventies. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and just a footnote. I mean, I, the the footage from that contest. There's a lot of people there. Yeah. No. It was. It, it was. Uh, yeah, it's it's funny. It's like yeah, the uh, yeah, the, it's, it was called. So this, for context, it was this. Um, you know, basically at that time in Europe, surfers was still pretty nascent. But in Ireland, you know, you know, your reaction is you know, here we are in two thousand twenty two. Is you know, there's a lot of people who don't still don't know that surfing is now big in Ireland. Um, if you go to Ireland now, like I go back to like the small town in uh, Strand Hill, Sligo, where my family's from. And when I West went Coast? there in the way well, yeah, in the seventies, mm-hmm. it was just you know our family had a lot of the farmland. Uh, it was hay, gr- mm-hmm. growing hay for animals and like sheep. And now there's a huge surf center, surf scene there. So like, um, yeah, the, the 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 interesting thing about that time, yeah, definitely like these guys were all kind of like focused on escaping from it. But it was also uh, in that 1972. What they did was really the Dublin crew convinced Eurosurf, who had been in, um, in the UK and France, to bring it to Ireland because they saw it as like that was their moment to really put it on the map. And also in 1972 uh, was the most violent year of the Troubles conflict, which, you know, I, more people died that year than and, you know, there, was, there was bombings, shootings, disappearings, really tragic time. Yeah. Uh, so, international teams were not traveling to Ireland at that time. So it, in that year, it was actually the only team sport to right. actually be held in Ireland. The only major sporting event to be held that year is uh, Ali came and fought in Dublin, which was a huge yeah, it's deal. Gotta be huge. Yeah, um, sure. But yeah, that was, a, and there was a ton of curiosity out there. Like, what is this? You know, the, what so many people had never heard of surfing or seen it. So there was, I think, a, a curiosity for a lot of people showing up at that contest. Yeah, and it was still, I mean, you think they never heard of it? I mean, back in the 70s? Yeah. Yeah. Or do you think I mean, they just maybe heard of it but didn't really understand what it was? Yeah, I think, you know, it's like in a few, I think, uh, like Willie Britton, who's one of like, you know, the, the probably the first family in Irish surfing in many ways. You know, they've had uh, four brothers who surfed, and his yep. family was really instrumental towards bringing surfing to like the Northwest. You know, he kind of describes when they first brought boards. To their family hotel which is on the beach and like i love his one line in the film and there's an old guy coming down the water and he goes he starts going to the pub he's like there's a boy walking on the water you know <laughs> <laughs> he's like you know it's like they had no um so foreign to yeah like, just like it, you know I, I remember and uh this uh, other woman who um more of a later surfer linda who was actually from malibu but wound up living at e-ski break for much of like the late 70s actually it was girlfriend of Mickey Dora. Oh, really? Uh, and when they broke up, she went to live at Eski and oh, lived really? there on and off for 20 years. Uh, Linda's story, it's like a later story, which isn't really covered in our film. But, um, you know, she, she her reference to living there, even this was in the late 70s and 80s. And, like, people would be like, oh, my God, look, are you the mermaid? You know, because <laughs> they would see her, this person, this girl, woman out in the water. Yeah. And like riding waves, um, so uh, yeah, it was a really a, a fun uh, to hear those stories because it's innocence and also, you know, the, some of these waves are like world class waves, yeah. and like these, like five to ten people were enjoying them to, to themselves for basically a decade. 
Yeah, some of the footage you have, I'm watching the waves and I'm just going like, like just totally dreaming. Like these guys had it so good, and they in some aspects they probably still have it good today. It's still yeah. probably relatively uncrowded compared to us. Yeah, I mean, I mean, California. you know, having you know now lived in California for about eight months. I mean, I it was up El Porto, and uh, it's just <laughs> it's. You know, I'm a buddy it's of mine. It's not Brian. Jersey. Yeah, or Jersey or Rockaway. It's like, yeah. you, know, the, you know, I, I, I there's still like hundreds of breaks. Now, granted, some of the famous breaks, which I kind of intentionally, I didn't drop a you ton of names. I, I, you know, because even my cinematographer, who's, he's, I love him. He's, he's Kev Smith. He lives uh, right at the Cliffs of Moore, which okay. is an iconic location in Ireland. Um, you know, he was very... He would send me this 4K gorgeous footage, and I would ask him, you know, where is this one? He goes, ah, I, yeah, let's not, yeah. I, he, he was holding back, and I, I fully respect that. So yeah, uh, for sure. Are, yeah. Are, in this day and age, are, are Irish surfers welcoming to outsiders? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, my my experience was when I did get in the water uh, between interviews because I I did a ton of interviews very on a crazy schedule. Like I was only because I was you know doing it from. Brooklyn, I would go over. I only went over actually twice for interview sessions. So I crammed all those interviews in two sessions, two wow. two trips. But yeah, when I got in the water, found the people great. You know, I, now Grant, I didn't go out in Bundoran like on a perfect day. Now maybe yeah. I I wouldn't be so welcome there. But uh, yeah, but where I did surf, I surfed in um, Sligo and uh, up in Donegal. And like you know, when me and my buddy Brian surfed, like we went to this place. It wasn't the best conditions, but it was like we were the only ones out. And I was only, you know, it's like, you know, so there's, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to get back there for some festivals this summer and also uh, hopefully it'll be like a, a summer swell to get back in the water and kind of continue to check out some of the coast. Yeah. One thing I found really interesting was how these guys, there was no boards around or, or, or any equipment for them to go surfing and how they had a brainstorm and how to come up, be creative to try to get out in the waves. Yeah, I mean, like particularly the guys in the north, they were very much, you know, uh, Bo Vance, who's yep. kind of a character in his own right. He was like, you know, engineering early records for them and Van Morrison during the right, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like, you know, at the night, he was kind of like figuring out how to design. You know, he was he's got a brilliant mind for figuring out sourcing because there was no blanks available. So they they kind of did an early uh, polystyrene you know, yeah. kind of um, yeah, yeah. material. And, uh, you know, some of these boards that they made and, and Davies were, Davy Gobbins were, he's like, they would never allow these boards being made today because we were, stuff we were using was so toxic. <laughs> it was, but, but to the, to the benefit of the surfboards, like some of those boards, there was one they described as a, the Wellington, which is yeah. kind of a, a shorter board to Alan Duke, but it was like a, like a polystyrene material. It was so hard that, they would just throw it down the rocks <laughs> and then they would go out and grab it because the thing would never get a ding. Um, wow. Yeah, and the resin on these things were like made of bionic. Yeah. Do you think uh, with Northern Ireland and coming down and everyone surfing together, they were all treating each other like they weren't, the politics weren't involved as being surfers. Yeah. I mean, I, I was very curious about that. Like, you know, because, hey, you know, at that time, it know, was rough. For it was rough. You know, it's like, you know, um, you know, there was like, um, you know, you think about, you know, there was, you know, like, I think they over the course of the troubles, which, hey, that spanned many years, but it was like 3,500 people lost their lives, you know, f during wow. the conflict. And, and you know, the thing about it is it's um, uh, Kevin Naughton who's from, you know, Dana Point, and, you know, he'll, he'll be there at the screening this week. You know, he's, um, grew up surfing in Huntington Point, but, you know, Irish descent. You know, the way he described it was, um, you know, it was just, the, the weird thing was, well, you didn't really, you're always kind of waiting to find out where somebody's from, trying to pick up on an accent, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, visually, when you look they at, the same. they look they're like, kind of like me, like Irish, yeah. uh, you know, pretty pale it really depends on hey if you're are you british are you a loyalist to the uk are you uh protestant you know all of that really fell away uh and i think kevin and they all talked about it and at, at one point in the film we kind of let them kind of expound on it it's um you know it, kevin says you know it really mattered was you know 
and your identity was determined by how good how or bad you served. Bad, yeah. bad you served. That was your identity. It's like, and I think that holds true today, even in, in surfing. If you would just boil down surfing in general, yeah, it definitely transcends, and uh, which is, hey, that's and then today, well, that's a actually, good thing. yeah, definitely, like, and uh, and in today, even you know, to the credit of these pioneers who came together, you know, hey, particularly at that time when the troubles conflict was, it was. A, a daily, you know, uh, struggle, mm-hmm. and it was like things could not have been more heated. You know, they decided uh, across the board there was no question that it was going to be one Irish Surfing Association. It wasn't going to be like okay, it was a split. Yeah, a, there was going to be like the Northern Ireland UK team, and then this other team that competes for the public. So these guys would travel to, uh, you know, get on planes together, Protestants and Catholics as on the plane team. as one team, and they would show yes. up, which is, you know. I don't really know of another place that took place really in, in, in during the, the troubles conflict where they were that, you know, just one unit, which is a, it's a great um, legacy that they left behind, you know, for That's, Ireland. Yeah, it is. I wish the rest of the Belfast would have. <laughs> yeah. I know. Hey, what, like, what you know, they were getting going. yeah, there was a, you know, and, um, but yeah, to, you know, luckily the, the 1998, the peace came, you know, broadly to the Island and it has held, even though it's, you know, there's been some concerns with Brexit about mm-hmm. whether, hey, there will be a divide again in Ireland. But, uh, you know, as of today, it's like it looks like it's holding, which is great, because I do think a lot of the younger generation are kind of like, well, hey, well, there's still resentments because, you know, many lives were lost on both sides that like, hey, like coming together as one is probably it, it's the long term benefit, you know, for Ireland. Right on. So, yeah, the movie was like, dude, I loved it. So, um, thank you. Everyone needs to go to the Oceanside Film Festival, which is happening. And your movie, it's a block of surf and uh, and skate films. Yeah. So, it's going to be this Saturday. I think it's uh, February the 26th, 26th, I think it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, The 26th. Yeah, and then uh, it'll be you know the the f- festival actually I think it starts uh, on uh, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow actually yeah, yeah. with a Tuesday. special screening of I think Blue Crush, um, yeah. which I'm very stoked about. I'm try to go to, um, right, and then um, but then um, yeah, I think it's going to run through it's going to run through Sunday, and then our film uh, Keep It a Secret is screening on uh, I think 8:45 on uh, Saturday night. And you're going to do a Q and A, so everyone come on out and you can ask the Sean the questions. Movie's super good and interesting. Thank you, um, Mike. Really appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Anything else about the film or anything else about you? No, I mean, uh, just, you know, if you're interested in the film, uh, keep it a secret film.com. You know, yep, we're, we're, we're super stoked about um, Oceanside, uh, the West Coast premiere this week. The, the film festival has been so welcoming. We're, we're, we couldn't be more excited. Like, you know, I screened it uh, in two places in Ireland, Belfast, and then we screened in a big uh, surf town, Port Rush. Okay. And like to see the reception up at Port Rush, a surf town, it's just so much fun. And so I am, uh, I'm just thrilled that like the place where we're going to premiere it is Oceanside, a true surf, you it know, that area. It's a true surf town. It's a mecca. So, uh, and yeah, how was so, uh, the, how did everyone receive, how did the movie receive there in Ireland? Uh, I'm way beyond my, my, you know, wildest dreams. It was like, you know, we got a, you know, I, I didn't hire a publicist or a PR firm, but we wound okay. up getting coverage, um, from like pretty much all the major papers, and then um, oh, right. yeah, like the the we, we sold out every screening. It's 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 been great, you know. So it's been super fun, and uh, yeah, I'm excited to. Uh, I, I this is gonna be a fun week. Uh, Ireland on Friday, Oceanside <laughs> on Saturday. I'm like, uh, this is like my early St. Patrick's Day this week. Oh yeah, it's right around the corner. And uh, any more festivals or anywhere else is gonna be premiering. Yeah, so uh, other festivals, um, we're going to be updating uh, on the website, but uh, on the docket right now is the following week will be in um, uh, the Crack uh, Irish uh, Film Festival. For those of you who don't know, Crack is an Irish word uh, for uh, all around good time, not the Crack Festival. Just a caveat. (laughs) The first time I heard that, it's a Gaelic term that means all around good time. But yeah, there's going to be the Crack uh, Irish Film Festival. Music Festival is uh, running uh, the first week of uh, March, so I'll be going to New York for that. The next night, it'll be premiering in um, Chicago, and then also that same night in San Francisco as part of the San Francisco Irish Film Festival. Rad. And then um, 
then Newport Film Festival, and then I think uh, uh, Toronto is about to be announced shortly. So, oh, uh, awesome. Yeah, so a bunch of places. So, uh, yeah, come, please check it out. If, say hello if you get out to any of the screenings. And then uh, you got like a social media. You got any like uh, Instagram? Yeah, account? you want to share? Yeah, that? you, you and I'll just put that on look the... up. Yeah, keep keep it a secret. Film um, on Facebook and uh, the Instagrams. Instagram. Uh, so uh, yeah, you can. I'll be posting updates there. And uh, yeah, then there's a bunch of other festivals that we've had reach outs from folks uh, that will hopefully have announcements for uh, other continents and uh, countries uh, for premiere in the film. Um, hopefully uh, throughout the rest of 22. Okay. And then the website. Yep. It's uh keep it a secret film.com. Okay. I'll post all those on the, on the notes. That's awesome. all right. Well, thank you so much, Sean, for joining us tonight at the quiver cast. I really appreciate it. Great talking to you, Mike. Hope to see you soon. Thanks everybody for listening. Please follow us on Instagram and follow us on your favorite podcast platform. Give us five stars. If you listen to us on Apple and do me a favor and tell a friend that QuiverCast is back. I'd like to thank Blue Factory and Dave Hegstrom for the music. And I'll see you all in the lineup. Hey, you guys, Endless Summer box set. This thing is legit. It's authentic, numbered certificate in it. It has a five-frame film strip from the original print. You will literally own a piece of history. It has a specially minted bronze medallion. Dude, that thing's sick. Okay, there's so much more here. Go to the show notes. There's a link on there. Go check this piece of history out. This thing's rad. Seriously. Smithsonian American History Museum has it. It took four years of research with 3.5 in production. All hand assembled. This thing's rad. So much to this awesome box set. Remastered DVD. Sharper images than the original film. But dude, this thing's so sick. Link in the show notes.